Now, what about senses together? This intermodal perception is about two different senses at once coming from the same source. So a lot of things don't have just one sense. Something's not just a sound. There's also a sight that goes with it. When we listen to people, they talk and they have facial movements and facial expressions. So there's sound and there's sight. And so that would be two modes of perception. So inter means between, modal, modes, so mode of perception, so different senses, so two different senses at, at once. So this leads to the question, are these senses innately connected or do infants have to learn to integrate information from the different senses? So this slide shows one, an example of a way that um, these studies are done. So there's a speaker in the middle and there are two video monitors on either side. And what's happening in the speaker matches one of the video monitors, but not one of the other video monitors. And then the researchers have a little camera there that shows where infants are looking. Are they looking at what the one that goes, the video that goes with the audio, or are they looking at the video that doesn't go with the audio? Is that more interesting to them? I'll also note when these studies are done, moms tend to be blindfolded, moms or dads or other caretakers who bring infants in for studies, um, because the, they're there to comfort the child, but um, it's important that they not cue them so they don't um, give any hints to the, to the infant. So it's purely what the infant is seeing um, is the cue for that. So um, we, we used an airline um, eye mask for our studies. It's just one of these little pieces with doing infant researchers because uh, infant research because you want the parent, the caretaker to be there and keep the infant comfortable. It wouldn't be very nice to put them in a high chair by themselves with nobody around. Uh, that would be highly unethical. And so this is part of that whole comfort and making research as um, ethical and comfortable as possible. Sight and sound. So here's two modes. In, so three to four month olds can read lips. So in those videos, one shows a happy adult and one shows an angry adult. And the speech coming out of the speaker is happy, then they'll look longer at the happy adult because they notice that that matches. They can use visual cues to distinguish different vowel sounds. So one adult is saying ah, and the other says e. And so you could do that with your mouth right now while you're watching the video and notice that your mouth changes and that it, you can tell what vowel that you're saying, especially when it's exaggerated for research. And the infant prefers the synchronous film, that is the one that goes along with um, the where the video and the audio match. A very recent study, in fact, the first author on this is at BYU locally, um, is that dog sights and dog sounds. Um, Six-month-olds were able to make intermodal relationships between the expressions of dogs. So if you see these photos of the dogs snarling and then other dogs happy, and they had either aggressive or non-aggressive barks. And just like the happy voice and happy face of the human, six-month-olds were uh, looked longer where the expression on the dog's face matched up with the bark. Very interesting, but you could definitely note how that would be a survival-related um, behavior and that that would be a skill that would be er learned early on. Sight and touch. Sight as one, touch as another. So um, in one study, eight to 11-month-olds looked at two different objects from a distance. So one was a fuzzy cylinder, one was a spiky plastic blob. Really, I mean, people put these things together for research. It's just this random, not a toy that they ever would have seen before. That's one of the important pieces. It's, it's novel to them. So custom-made toys and labs really work well for this. Uh, control trials um, were that the site matched up with the feel of an object when they um, felt for them. And then there were trick trials where they looked at one object, but they felt another. So they're looking at the fuzzy cylinder, but they feel the spiky plastic blob, all done with the use of mirrors. And um, they definitely thought that that was strange. They, it, the um, infants nine and a half months and up, they were surprised when the sight did not match the feel in their hand. And another study, this was done with 12 hours old infants. And one thing to note is I've talked about how poor infant vision is, but that is their distance vision, that they can see things close to their face. So they either sucked on a pacifier that had little, um, little not spikes on it, that would be evil, but those little um, nodules on it, the bumpy pacifier, and then the smooth pacifier. And they looked longer at the one that was in their mouth. 
sight and body movements. Um, so imitation. So they're looking at something and you've probably, if you've been around a young infant, that when you stick your tongue out, they'll also stick their tongue out. It's a cute little trick. This imitation feature um, comes online really early, less than three days old. They could imitate those. And um, so they, it takes a lot to do this, that they have to see somebody sticking out their tongue. Then they have to form their tongue and stick their tongue out and compare it um, visually, it's really quite an, um, an astounding ability, so young. Eventually, infants only do this for their close caregivers. Um, it's, and there are some ideas that this is a way of identifying people, and so the ones that they're around a lot, they will do this for, they'll stop doing it for other people um, eventually. I'm not sure how many months um, it takes for them to do that, but um, that's a feature. So, summary. As you see, this Life Magazine thing, babies are smarter than you think. So they actively seek information about the world. They want to know stuff. They will put stuff in their mouth to figure it out. There's that the active child theme. They emphasize, um, the previous emphasis on motor behaviors led researchers to underestimate infants' ability. So back when, they, when an infant had to reach for something to show what they knew, they thought they didn't know very much because the reaching wasn't as advanced as the thinking and the recognition of something. So now using looking paradigm, um, habituation, these different methods, um, research has been able to actually use what infants can do to show what they know. So the experience of the world is not characterized by William James's blooming buzzing confusion. So we notice that they begin to discriminate visual stimuli very, very early on. And depth perception is coming online between two and seven months. Very early interest in faces. Um, great ability to process faces, which is a really helpful thing as a social species that we are. They can hear and remember aspects of what they hear before they're born, like that Dr. Seuss study. And they can coordinate information from more than one sense. They can coordinate sight and hearing, sight and touch, etc. at three to four months. Pretty astounding. So we conclude... No, infants are not stupid. Thank you for listening.